Bruchem Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Uh, to tell you the truth, the, the topic today will be on truth. And um, it's a, as I delved into the topic, I was amazed because I always see myself as someone who always tells the truth. And should you always tell the truth? And the more I thought about it, I was amazed, especially looking into life and the Torah as our guidebook. It's not so simple that you always tell the truth. Now, truth is very important. In fact, one of God's names is the word emes, which is truth. If you take the last letter of the first three words of the Torah, Horatius Baralukim, spells the word emes, truth. The last three letters of the last three words, Asher Bara Elokim Lasos. So Bara Elokim Lasos, those three words which finishes off the creation. Again, Emes, truth. So God, so to speak, signs his name in, to the beginning and end of creation with his major concept, which is truth. So, in fact, if we take the numerical value of the word truth, Emes, Aleph, Mem, Tuf, uh, is 441. 4, 4, and 1 is 9. 9 times any number comes back to 9. Truth never changes. By that I mean 2 times 9 is 18, 1 and 8 is 9. 5 times 9 is 45, 4 and 5 is 9. You can take it all the way up. never changes. And not only that, the word M is truth, first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, middle letter of the Hebrew alphabet, last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Again, encompasses everything. In addition, all three of those letters have two legs. Truth stands firm and strong as a, as a example for us. Not only that, one of the reasons I always joke about why I tell the truth all the time is because when you lie, you need a great memory, and I don't have a great memory, so I don't want to waste a hard drive trying to remember lies because one lie begets another lie, and then you have to remember who you told what to. It becomes very complicated. So it's just a whole lot simpler and a lot easier in life, and you feel better about yourself by telling the truth. Yet, when we look into the Torah, we see that the forefathers, that Abram Ravino, Abraham, that when Sarah was abducted into both the harem of both the Egyptian king and the Philistine king, that he lied and called her his sister. We see that Yitzhak, the second of the forefathers, uh, when they moved to the land of the Philistines again, the, that he had his Rivka say that she was his sister. Again, a lie. Uh, we see with Yaakov, whose trait is emis, which is truth, lies quite a bit. He takes the uh, blessings from his brother and makes his father think that he is Asa. He puts on Asa's clothes. He puts on goat's hair, just to, he, since Asa was a hairy person and he was not, to fool his father. When he meets Rachel, his future wife, and she says that her father is a, a trickster, a liar, a swindler, he says, I will be his brother, that I'll deal with him on his level. And even when he comes back from Lavan's house, Torah says that Hesav offers to accompany him. And he says, no, you know, I have a lot of cattle, young children, take me longer, I'll meet you at your place. And the truth is he's never intended to go that far. So we really misled Esau again. So we see that even more, that God, God Almighty himself, actually lies. When it comes to Sarah, Sarah, our mother, that when she hears that she's going to give birth to a child, she laughs. And she says that, how am I going to have a child? My husband's an old man. Now, when God Almighty retells her words to Abraham, to Avram, God changes up a bit and says she laughed because she says, I'm an old woman. How could I have birth, give birth to a child? So God changes it a bit. So what we see is that even though truth is absolute, yet we have examples in Torah that from great people, the forefathers and God Almighty himself, that being absolutely truthful is not always the answer. 
In fact, from Yaakov, we see when he meets uh, Asa, that he flatters him and he bows down to him. He sends him gifts. He bribes him. Again, being disingenuous so that they wouldn't go to battle and they wouldn't have to fight each other. They wouldn't have to kill anyone. So is being completely honest the way to go? And the Torah seems to indicate no. Not only that, there's something called what we call a tzaddik shota, a foolish, righteous individual. Because if you think you have to tell the truth all the time, there was a cute commercial, I guess Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln was considered to be honest Abe. And then the commercial, his wife, who was a little heavy, uh, asked him, do I look fat? <laughs> and he kind of stutters. <clears throat> the commercial doesn't end with what he says. But do you tell your wife t that she's fat? Do you tell someone um, something that's going to embarrass them and make them feel bad? And if you stop and think about it, what we, one of the three things we give our lives up for, one of the three cardinal sins, is killing someone. That if someone were to say to you, kill that person or I'll kill you, you have to let yourself be killed. Because who says your blood's any redder than his? So you do not kill that person. But what we call a murderer is someone's called the shofek damim, spills blood. Not a murderer, not that, but the term is one who spills blood. From this we learn out that if you embarrass someone, what you do is you move the blood. When you embarrass someone, their face gets red, and then the blood drains from their face and it gets white. So you're moving blood, shofek damim. So embarrassing someone is tantamount to murder. So if someone asks you a question, and that will embarrass, the answer will embarrass that person, you really have to be sensitive to that fact, because embarrassing someone, especially in public, is no different than killing someone. So based on that, one has to be very careful on how he responds. Not only that, things change. As a businessman, <clears throat> years ago, when I would hire someone who had a resume and they worked for other people, there was a time when I would call the other employer up, or employers, and ask them about the person. I stopped doing that. Because I came to the realization, number one, is who says the person's going to be honest when I ask them the question? Because a lot of people just don't want to get involved. For fear if they say this person was awful and you tell that person, now you've got someone with a grudge against you. And even more so, I don't know who that other employer is. Maybe he was a jerk. Maybe he was disingenuous. Maybe he treated them badly. And a lot of times, in fact, we had an employee that worked for us who was not that good of an employee. And yet the, this woman went to work for a doctor and somehow my wife bangs into her, for, you know, I went to the doctor, whatever it was, and they were singing her praises. They thought she was the greatest employee they'd ever seen. So sometimes in different arenas, people are different. Not only that, until you're really pushed, a lot of times many people are nice until you put them under pressure. And then all of a sudden they're not so nice. So there are different degrees. In fact, they, they tell a cute story of uh, two poor men that were talking about where is the best place to get money, which town, which place. And one of them said there is a certain place, certain town, and in this place people are very, very generous. And um, as they were talking, the other poor person chuckled and said to him, they really are not that generous in that place. I've been there. He said, but they were very generous to me. <laughs> and he chuckled and said, sure they were. You came on Purim. And on Purim, we know one of the three major mitzvahs of good deeds of Purim is to give charity to the poor. And everyone has to do it, even poor people. So on that time to be anywhere, you're going to think it's a very charitable place, very generous, because everybody's giving out money. But that was not the case. That was not the truth. Now, there are th basically three places that we say a person has to be totally honest. Or not. Eulogies for the dead. A shidduch, if someone comes and asks you about a certain individual, to whether they for for getting married, and in business, if a person is honest and a good person to partner up with. But again, 
it's even with eulogies, which is very tough, because we believe that when you give a eulogy, that the angel, the, that the accusing angel uses that eulogy to condemn a person. If you say things that they weren't true, and they ask that person, why weren't you like they say you were on earth? So instead of being a positive, it can very well be a negative. On the other hand, I did see where you can embellish a bit, that you don't have to be brutally honest, that you can flower things a little bit, but you need to be careful to be in the neighborhood, kind of like the drunk. You know, the drunk was standing by the door and put his key into the door, and someone tapped him on the shoulder and said, you know, this is not your house. He said, I know, I'm waiting for it to come around. So as long as you're in the neighborhood, you know, it's, it's okay, but you need to be careful as to how much you say. Same thing with the shidduch. There was a, um, a man who had gone to have a shidduch with a certain woman, and they stopped off in an inn that's been told both ways. And when it was in the end, he heard someone speaking very pleasantly, very uh, positively about the family and about this young man. And because of that, they made the shidduch. And when they got back, they found out that they, it really wasn't the truth, that the family was not that good. And there were questions, but they had heard, what they had heard was from this person's good friend. And they didn't realize it. When they went to see the re their Rebbe and complained, he said, I knew about it. But heaven evidently wanted you to hear what you heard, and that's why the shidduch should go through. Don't break it. On the other hand, there was another story of someone who went again and stopped off in an inn and heard people talking in a negative way about the, the chassan. And they left. They never even went. And these were people that hated the person. So sometimes what you see that being honest, when someone asks you about a shidduch, it's also a matter, you're also being a bit subjective, how your relationship is with someone. So you don't have to be, again, brutally honest if you've had a negative relationship. Not everybody does. So that it's another case where do you have to be totally honest? What you should try to do is find some way to at least talk about the good points of the person. It doesn't have to be an overwhelming agree, agree, agreement of what the person is, but at least not negative. You don't want to sink the ship. And in business, I remember I uh, played racquetball with someone, and he was a prince. You know, if you got to eat with the person, he would pick up the check. He was very giving, seemed very kind, very warm. And it, I heard stories about him being, being very unscrupulous in business. And I found it very strange because it just didn't seem to fit his personality. And I just figured it was all people talk. I played racquetball with him. And when I first started playing with him, he was much better than me. And we didn't play for a while, and I got much better. And I was shocked because when we started playing again and I was beating him, he cheated every time he could. It blew me away. So under pressure, all of a sudden... That person, I saw things I didn't see before. So in business, sometimes depends on your relationship with the person. And when someone asks you a question, if you know out and out that the person has cheated you, you really have a responsibility to tell the other person. On the other hand, depending upon what it was, you need to analyze what it is. So where are we? We've gone in, in through this whole thing. And is there really an answer? And I think the answer is, like all things, good and bad are not black and white. Many times in life there are things that are gray, and that's the real problem we have with being religious. Because when it's just black and white, it's simple. Keep Shabbos, don't keep Shabbos. Eat kosher, don't eat kosher. Be moral, don't be moral. These are, these are, these are absolutes. And so is truth, but there's an asterisk. You never want to be honest to the point of hurting someone if you don't have to. And if you can, always take the high road. And if, otherwise, or just say nothing. Try not to be, in, be put in that situation. But the bottom line is God signed his Torah at the beginning and the end of creation with the word emes, truth. He expects us to be truth.
we need to be truthful and we need to deal with people that way. And if nothing else, it's the easiest way to be. Because again, you don't have to remember everything you've said. God bless you and may you always be truthful and find joy in everything that you say and everything that you do. Thank you for coming and have a good Shabbos.